Okay. All right, we've got the main engine done and we're going to move on to the uh, generator. Uh, this is a really nice little unit. This one it, um, has both oil and fuel filters on it. Some of them you'll find don't have any filters at all and they do it all externally. Uh, the one thing I didn't happen to bring is the correct filter for this. I didn't have that in my kit, so we're going to have to save that for another day. Um, fortunately, this engine does have its own fuel filter on it, so it will have a new protection on it. So that being said, I'm going to go down and release the cover. You're going to need a flat bladed screwdriver. And there's a slotted screw right at the top here. You just turn it counterclockwise. Okay, off, up. There's a slot at the bottom that holds it in place, just out of your way. This lever right here is the uh, valve to the sump. You're going to need a 3 8 to half inch nipple or 5 8 inch nipple. You just screw that right into that. Okay, I've got the new fitting in. I've got my oil pump set up with a different hose so I can reach down in here. Just install that right on there. Turn on the sump. And again. This holds about two quarts of oil. I like to let it run just for a little bit just to get a little bit extra out of it if we can. Okay. Again, leave the pump run as you release the, the line. Turn the sump off. And just turn the pump off. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and pull the oil filter off and the secondary fuel filters. Fuel filter, I should say. Spin it off. Again, make sure that the gasket is with the filter while you're there. Lubricate the new filter with some of that used oil. And we're just going to screw that right on there. Again, hand tight only. That takes care of that. Okay. And now we're going to go after that fuel filter. Should come off about the same. I'm going to turn off the fuel valve, though I know it's not going to siphon, but it's always a good practice to turn that off as you're manipulating the fuel filters. Didn't do it on the other one, so I'm sorry about that. But we're going to do it here. And we're going to go ahead and screw that fuel filter off. And that's right there in the right corner. Okay, this one's a bear. This wrench seems to be the one to use. And I struggled, but I got it loose. And it just spins off after that. So carrying multiple wrenches works. I see what they did. Okay, we got it off. Uh, we did find out that there is a bolt in the cover over here that's a little too long that was actually holding against the, oil, the fuel filter, so I had to release that. I'm going to be sure to tighten that back up. Okay, nice and clean, just what I expect. Gasket came down with the filter. Uh, it is important, I keep mentioning that, but it is very important to check that. So at this point we're ready to uh, lube up the new filter and get it in place. We're going to put a little fuel in it, just like we did the last time. All 
right, here we go. Hand tight. And spin that screw back in. fitting and clean up our mess. Okay, now we've got the filters changed. We've got the fuel filter changed. Now we've got to get the oil in the engine. On the Ranger, uh, they give you a cavity right here that we have to open up. That twists, okay. And inside there, you're gonna see the dipstick. This is where you check the oil at, and we're going to fill it at that same hole. Thank you. This holds about two quarts, so we're going to kind of measure it in. I'm at one quart on that right now, so we're going to break it down to three. Gonna need just a little bit more. Now you want to take your time filling this because there's a long narrow neck that goes right down to the sump and what will happen is it'll come up over that neck and spill into the oil pan. So just take your time and we're in no hurry here. The trick is to try to keep it as clean as possible. Okay I'm right at three quarts right there. That means I put in two. Let that settle for a minute. I'm going to do a little spot cleaning here. It takes a while for that oil to settle all the way down, so just be patient. I know we're close because it only holds two quarts. I'm going to call it good right there. again and take a look at the generator as we start it back up. I came down here and I realized I had gone a little bit too fast to at least one of the pores. So I had a little oil drooling down, just clean that up. And at this point we're ready to fire the generator and we're going to be looking for leaks. Okay, if you want to start it please. Did you shut it off? Nope. Okay, I realized as we tried to start it that I made the major faux pas not turning the valve on. If you will, hit the primer side of that switch, please. That's the lower side. You'll hear that pump cycling. When it gets consistent, we should be good. Okay, now we can go ahead and try to start it again. Takes care of that. Go ahead. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and get the cover back on. Just kind of tilt it in there. Look around, make sure it didn't leave any oiling mess. And with that being said, we're done. All right, with that, we've got everything done. Um, we've, got, we've changed the two oil filters. We've got the primary fuel filter for the engine and the secondary. We primed the fuel system for the engine and fired her. 
And we did the same thing over on the generator. We changed oil and fuel filter. Unfortunately, we did not have the right filter for the R11T here. So we'll have to do that on the next go around. But everything seems to be back together and both engines are running. So at that, we can close her up. And the 31 tug is done for the winter for oil change.